Hey guys, well this is exciting. Just picked up our panel from Aircraft Specialty. Uh, this is the panel that we designed over several months with uh, Steve over there at Aircraft Specialty. Awesome guy to work with. Loads of knowledge. Uh, this is the second panel actually we had cut. Uh, the first one was when we were going to do the Continental engine and we just used it kind of for fitting purposes. This was the final one. Uh, we went back and forth a few iterations through uh, PDFs and then uh, finally had a panel cut. Liked the way it looked, put all the nut plates in and then uh, finalized the uh, text, the powder coat color and silk screen. And now we have a finished and ready for instruments to be installed in panel. So let's take a look at that. We'll take a look up close here, kind of show you what we're doing. And we're going to start putting our instruments in the panel today. All right, well, let's take a look here left to right. On the left side here of the panel, we have our ELT indicator and test function. We're going to have our trim up and down button along with the Ray Allen trim indicator. We have a USB data port for our uh, Dynon firmware upgrades. We have our throttle hole, throttle, and then we have our flap uh, switch, activation switch. We went with the uh, aircraft specialty flap lever. You'll see that later as we get to installing that. So we take the stock three position Zenith toggle switch and we overlay a nice big flat panel that's uh, makes it look a little bit nicer. Uh, in the center here, we have our comm radio. This is the Dynon comm radio. Right below that, we have the Dynon two-place intercom. Now, one thing to note, if you're building a Super Duty, which has three seats, Dynon does not currently make a three-position intercom. So you'll either need to go with a different brand intercom, or you'll need to... Uh, do a splitter on your passenger side and just give the person in the back headphones or something only. So just keep that in mind if you're doing that. On the left here, our main screen, our PFD is the HDX 10 inch screen. That is our primary flight display, engine instruments, maps, the whole shebang there. Across the top here, got the tail number on there. Um, this number has been reserved for quite a while. I used to have this on one of our commercial UAS aircraft, uh, but it is now reserved for this aircraft. On the right side here, we have the 10.1 inch iPad Pro. This will be running for flight and uh, we'll be using the remote GPS and ADS-B receiver. So essentially we have two completely redundant and battery backed up navigation systems. We've got our passenger warning there about it being an amateur uh, built aircraft. Over here on the right side, keeping it simple here, we have a charge port. This is going to be the Garmin uh, charge port, uh, real high quality aviation grade USB charger. So if you want to charge your phone, charge an iPad, camera, whatever, you can do that from right here in the cockpit. And then right below there, we have a three position switch for our Viking aircraft engine heat. So if you're not familiar with that, it's basically a small radiator that mounts up under the dash, takes uh, hot coolant off the engine, runs through there, and then there's a fan that is either off on high or low. So there's two fans. Low is one fan, high is both fans, and the middle is off. And it's very small. There's, it, it, with the fans off, very little heat comes off that, uh, that radiator, if you will. So we are uh, in the process of, we're going to get this put onto a stand so we can start working on avionics and doing our wiring. So we'll get a stand put together, we'll get this propped up, and then we're gonna start putting our parts and pieces in here so that we can start planning out wiring, sensors, and such. So that's next in the build series, guys. Well, the first device is the uh, Garmin GSB-15. This is this little commercial grade USB charger. We're gonna go ahead and put that in there. And you can see how nice everything fits here. We'll go ahead and put a couple screws in there. Mm -hmm. 
This particular unit only comes with two screws. I'm gonna have to pick up some more. I like the uniformity of having four screws. I thought it looked better, so I'll be picking up two more screws. But it gives it a nice look, and of course this rim right here lights up once this is uh, powered up. Our next device is our Guardian Avionics iPad mount. I'm gonna get everything. Next up is the Dynon Com radio. Next is our two place Dynon intercom. And of course, the heart of the system, the Dynon HDX panel. Well, there's the main components, guys. It's coming together nice. Everything's fitting up just like it should. On to the small parts. All right, guys, I want to show you up close uh, on this top door hinge portion here. This is the uh, top of the door frame, and this is the hinge piece that you have to cut and fit and drill and drill again and bevel and so on. So this is probably one of the most labor intensive pieces on this whole airplane, uh, getting these holes to be uh, flush and be able to drop a uh, A5 rivet in there. And then of course, instead of using our rounded rivet head on our gun, we'll use a flat tip, which will then mushroom that into that bevel and make it nice and flush so lots of work going into this not only just all the layout and the cutting but also the primary drilling the secondary drilling the beveling the deburring the removal i mean it's just a lot of pieces here and you're talking you know two four six eight you got 20 something holes you got to do that two or three times and that's just for one side on just the top we haven't even got to the top half of the hinge or you know actually putting it on the fuselage so just be aware guys there's a lot of steps in this there are some pretty good guides um, the doors are covered in two um, pdfs that are available on the uh, google drive one covers kind of the uh, door sill layout and the second one covers uh, all of the door frame assembly including the parts that we're working on here right now. So door frame, hinges, cutting the hinges, laying out the frame itself, adding the spaces around there, and uh, you know, getting your all your four sides cut, and then clamping them together and riveting them together. So that's kind of what we're working on now, um, and we'll kind of proceed through that and see how far we get. All right, let's go ahead and walk through how we do one of these holes here. Here I've got a hole that is not ready for rivets yet. You can see it's way above the top there. Take our countersink bit here. Drive that in a little bit. Get the hole started. Clean up the hole with our standard drill bit. And then clean up the hole with our deburring tool. Nice round circle there, drop her in, and we're pretty dang close there. So, just got to fine tweak each hole to get it to just be slightly under the, the lip of the uh, tube or the hinge, and we'll be good to go. Got a few more to do here. Good, good, and good. All right, guys, so we've prepped our, uh, our piano hinge for the part that's mounted to the upper door frame. And we have drilled our holes, and we've countersunk our holes, and we've check fit everything. So now um, what I went ahead and did is just prime that surface that's going to be touching. Uh, because obviously we won't be able to get to that after we start painting it. I am going to paint these doors. I was going to um, have these powder coated as well, but I think uh, because of how it needs to be painted and the order it needs to be done, I'm just going to use regular paint. 
So first we'll go ahead and throw a few Clecos in here and get it uh, kind of lined up. And then we'll try putting in a few rivets. The one thing I want to do before that, and I should have done that first, was then that is cut those uh, two hinge things off because we're going to have bent pins in the middle. So what I'm going to do is get the top piece of the hinge, mark the center where I want to cut them off, and then we'll cut those off real quick first. All right, so the part that I kind of forgot to do, we're going to do that right now, is basically what they tell you to do here in the instruction is mark the middle and two loops on the door frame, remove the pin. So what they want you to do basically is kind of find the middle of the door frame, which I did, mark the middle and then two loops on the top and you're gonna take out these three loops right here. And that's gonna leave us a gap so that when we bend our pin on a 90 degrees, we'll be able to stick it in from the side or the middle towards the out, outboard edge and same this direction, but we'll have enough gap there that we can put those pins in there. So we wanna take out two complete loops on the top and one on the frame. So we're gonna cut that out right now. All right, guys, so we're gonna cut off this tab right here. I got it marked. Nice, easy cut. We'll go ahead and file that up a little bit, and then we'll do the same with the uh, door piece. Clean that up and we'll be back in business. All right guys, so we've taken off those couple hinge points and what that allows us to do is basically leave a gap here. You can see like that. And then when we cut the hinge pin in half, when we go to put this together, we'll be inserting it from the middle and only going across halfway. And then this will have a 90 degree bend. We'll have one rod here and then we'll have one rod going in this direction and being bent 90 degrees there. So we'll have two short rods that we pull out from the middle and that'll allow us to uh, take our doors off if we want to. So now we're back in business. Now we can go ahead and Clico up the hinge, piano hinge, and we can start trying to put in our first rivets here. So now what we're looking for on this, if you're used to, uh, take a look at this tip right here. You see this tip, it's flat. So therefore, when we put the rivet in, it's going to keep it flat. It's not going to cone it like the ones on the, on the fuselage body. So when we countersunk the rivets here, they're now laying below the surface of the hinge. And therefore, when we rivet that, they will actually be slightly countersunk. You can see that that's slightly recessed. So now we'll go ahead and try and pull the first rivet. There we go. Now we just got to do that all the way across. And there is the final product, guys. All the rivets are countersunk. Everything's in. We've got our hinges in there. And uh, we'll make some final adjustments on those. But you can see this tab now will be marked for rivets. And those will be riveted right to the top two. Let's go ahead and take that over there real quick. So this will be put up here with our proper gaps on the front and back and then we'll put some rivets in there and this will be the, the beginning of our first door being completed. All right guys, well in an effort to keep these uh, episodes somewhat manageable, we're going to go ahead and stop this episode here and we'll pick it up on the next episode uh, where we'll be actually finishing up and building out this door frame. So stay tuned, guys, for the next episode, Adam and the Arrow Works Workshop, working on the Super Duty. We'll see you in the next video.